The main thing I teach my clients and I teach every single person is, uh, we call it Achieve Nutrition, to become a pack flipper. So instead of looking at the front of the packaging on packaged foods, flip it around and look at the back of the packaging at the ingredient list because the front of the packaging that's your advertising, your real estate, you can say pretty much whatever you want. However, I don't know how is it in UK, but in Australia, you have to claim every ingredient that is more than 1% of the product. So you can't lie. Well, welcome everybody to the Sweet Liberation podcast. Today, I'm really excited because we've got Veronica Laraslova with us, who is a holistic, uh, integrative exercise physiologist. And uh, that's a, a very big title. I'm very excited to know more about that. And you're also the founder of uh, uh, New Chief Nutrition. Uh, so I'd um, really love to hear about your views on nutrition. Uh, but yeah, can we go back to your your actual, in terms of what you do and, um, and, and everything around that that'd be great yeah well that sounds like a crazy title but I had to somehow define what I do and because I do so many different things I thought mm -hmm. that this was the best definition so I started as a personal trainer while I was studying exercise physiology at the university which is when I became exercise physiologist but then I went on and studied nutrition I studied nutrigenomics and became genetic testing practitioner. I became gut health practitioner and it just kept rolling on and on. I did uh, courses in neurolinguistic programming and I did all that because I believe that you need to have all these therapies together to get better and recover, whether it is your um, uh, injury, musculoskeletal injury, and you're doing rehabilitation with your exercise physiologist for that, or uh, you're trying to improve your performance, or you have a chronic disease such as diabetes or metabolic syndrome, and you're seeking exercise physiologist for that. The exercise is a big part of it, but it's not just that. You can exercise as much as you like, but if you don't address your diet as a diabetic, for example, nothing's going to happen. So then as an exercise physiologist and nutritionist, I can give you the exercise and I can give you the diet. But then if you do not have the correct mindset, it's nothing is going to happen still. So then you need to also fix your mindset. So I help my clients with mindset. I help them with exercise as well as nutrition which is integrative practices. And I also collaborate with um, the best practitioners in my area. So we, I share my patients with one of the best sports doctors in Sydney, uh, with a gut health and fertility doctor as well. And I have few uh, physiotherapists, which I refer to and they refer to me. So we have like this whole team. We're not in the same company. We refer people to each other. And then once they come to me, I then collaborate with all these practitioners. We create a plan and with me, they do their nutrition exercise and mindset. Wow, that's amazing. And I, so that is the holistic approach then, taking all of the yeah. different areas together. Yeah. Fabulous. And then you're drawing on all of that knowledge then to create yeah. the the right um, advice and, you know, to to the yeah. people that you're supporting. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So that's why I created the title Holistic Integrative, because I didn't know how to explain it in a short sentence when people ask me, what do you do? And then I'd be like, oh, yeah, I can help you with the exercise and rehabilitation and nutrition and mindset. Then it was like a whole overwhelming spiel so and i just am holistic integrative exercise physiologist done <laughs> brilliant oh that's fabulous and so so generally were people that, that you're do, so do people come to you for help with all different areas then and yes. they have different um, what, yes and and so then you look at the whole solution do you for that person yes. Yes, oh, and amazing. I do lots of different, like I use their like measurements they use as well, like their aura rings, Apple watches. I do the nutrigenomics test, which reveals their inclination to like inflammation and all different um, diseases or disorders they can be related to their nutrition. Um, I do their gut health tests. Like there's a lot of different things. Not everyone needs to get everything. Some of my clients don't need any specific tests, but if they need them, it's available. Right. And and there are obviously things that you would recommend or not recommend to people as well. And there's going to be foods that there, there are going to be certain avoid foods. Um, yes. 
what what would you say people if it, it, somebody that would come to you generally what it, what are your you, you know do you have a you know type of foods and things that you'd recommend i yeah, well it depends on someone's preference like if someone comes to me and they're vegan i personally don't have to agree with it but i can't tell them don't be vegan so i always try to give them the best possible option with what they have available uh however I say to everyone to stop eating any ultra processed foods because they are the cause of many illnesses these days because of all the ingredients they contain. They're not real foods. They're industrially manufactured, very hyper palatable, full of calories, very high in calories, very, very low in nutrients. So when people eat those foods, they always keep craving those foods because they're hyper palatable. They're eating excessive amount of calories, but they're not getting enough nutrients. And mm. instead of that, they're filling their bodies with damaging um, compounds such as emulsifiers, which destroy their gut lining, cause inflammation. And if someone has good diabetes, which is already inflammatory disease, mm. then having ultra processed foods every single day, it's just going to make it worse. Right. Yes. And, and, and I think that's the, the thing that we, we see as well with people is that, uh, that and in fact, sometimes people say to us about the, the whole thing with regard to fat as well. And where you've got you, I don't know what your views are on the way that the, the food industry has done things like said, oh, a low fat, they've marketed low fat yogurts and things as yeah, good for you. Whereas, of course, they've then packed that yogurt with other things and sugar. To take when they've taken the fat. And we do need fats for our cell membrane. Every cell membrane is made from fats. Our brain needs fats. We need fats for our hormonal production. So I don't think going low fat is the solution. No, exactly. And I, as I say, I think that's been, you know, certainly fat was marketed a few years ago as being the bad guy. And you had to, yeah. avoid, you know, they were one of the things. And you probably noticed that, you know, and know with your customers and, and people that you help, with, it, you know, are, you know, you probably say, don't, you know, would you do that? Say to them, don't necessarily avoid fats. Yeah, of course. No, I encourage people to eat good fats. Uh, I discourage them to eat seed oils and vegetable oils and hydrogenated fats. But I definitely encourage my clients to cook in good fats, eat good fats because they're very important. The main thing I teach my clients and I teach every single person is uh, we call it achieve nutrition to become a pack flipper. So instead of looking at the front of the packaging on packaged foods, flip it around and look at the back of the packaging at the ingredient list because the front of the packaging that's your advertising your real estate you can say pretty much whatever you want however i don't know how is it in uk but in australia you have to claim every ingredient that is more than one percent of the product so you can't lie you can no. sell the front of the packaging healthy chocolate, but if you flip it around and it's full of emulsifiers and seed oils, it's definitely not healthy for you. So no. yeah, that's the main thing I teach everyone, become a pack flipper. I have clients, they are CEOs of a big companies and they don't know how to navigate in the world of packaged foods because they don't know what is healthy, what is unhealthy. They don't know what emulsifier means or what does it do. They think that certain things with healthy sounding names like vegetable oil, oh, it's from vegetable, it must be healthy, but it's actually not really so that's the part of being the holistic practitioner as well is providing the education on how to navigate in navigate. supermarket. And I like that term that, you know, be, becoming a pack, pack flip to actually, you know, look at the back of things. And it's the same in the UK. Yes, the, there are everything has to be on the packaging. It has to be very, and it, it's generally ordered in things that are the 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 highest volume and then it it, it descends down through the package it, on the packaging the list of food uh, or list of ingredients as that gets less and less but i would like to see even more information on the packaging saying what the actual percentages are because sometimes you know you might see sugar as the second you know item after something yeah. like wheat and then you think, well, I don't, I can see that the, that's the second ingredient, but the, and then you look at the sugar percentages because you've obviously yeah. got that table as well in yeah. terms of nutrition. So that's really useful for and and so as part of what you're you're, you're teaching people, uh, looking at being a packet flipper as well, and then yeah. integra I'm sure integrating that with exercise. Yes, hundred percent. Because as I said, you can exercise all day every day, but if you eat the wrong foods, you still not get healthy. 
you might be get healthier but you still won't you won't be full healthy until you address your diet right okay yes and, and, and there's then... a fact that some people cannot start with exercise yeah you know, like i don't have any morbidly obese clients but if someone is morbidly obese they can't start exercising and doing squats it's too much for them they need to lose some weight first and they can only do that through diet Yes, yeah, absolutely. And actually, I, I personally think my own view on that is that it's actually easier in some ways to diet than it, and, and actually drop a few pounds than it is to actually exercise. Yeah. That, you yeah. know, because you know, it, that it for me, anyway, that's how. But it then is. you also have to remember that it's not all about weight loss because that now is a lot of people are on Ozempic and similar type of drugs thinking that they lose weight and that's their, you know, goal achieved. But it's not because the weight loss, losing weight from not eating, yes, you drop the weight, so it improves some of your biomarkers and stuff, but it's not doing anything to your muscle mass, it's not helping your joints, it's not helping your heart. It is a little bit because you lost the weight, but you're not getting any fitter, stronger, you're not getting more mobility. So I just want to emphasize that, yes, the diet will help you lose weight, but the weight loss itself is not the main thing in the health journey. Right. Oh, that's, yeah, that's great. And um, yes, so and like you can lose weight and be skinny. But if you don't exercise, by the time you're 60, you'll be immobile and on crutches. Well, if you do exercise every day and if you do mobility exercises and stretch it and you move around, you will have health, you have a healthy heart. You will be fully mobile. You'll be strong. You'll be self-sufficient and independent for the rest of your life. But you can't do that without exercise, just with dieting. And, and how much exercise do you generally recommend that people in per day? Is that per person or do you? Do you Look, I don't really agree with the recommendations of World Health Organization of 30 minutes exercise a day. I think it's absolute rubbish okay. because humans are not meant to sit around like this all day, every day. We're not, we're not accustomed to do that. We're not genetically meant to be doing that. So if someone's job is sedentary and they sit eight hours a day, they need to exercise every day. And it doesn't mean going to the gym every day, but they should at least go for a walk before and after work, especially after dinner. If they have any metabolic condition, any blood glucose, insulin issues, they should be walking after dinner and they should be walking before work. And this is not just because of the physical activity, but also to get a fresh air, to get some sunlight, to reset their circadian rhythm and things like that. So saying to someone who is sitting all day every day that half an hour of exercise is enough, it's definitely not enough. I don't think it's even enough to prevent chronic disease. If you're sitting all day every day, half an hour is definitely not enough. Okay, well, that's that's great. And then so, um, and of course, that balance with the right nutrition uh, thing. Yes. So we talked about nutrition earlier. And, and tell me a bit about uh, chief nutrition. What, how, well, how... chief nutrition was the response to, like, we wanted to have convenient food. I do lots of hiking, trail running and things like that. And I couldn't find any convenient food that's not ultra processed food. So the classification of the ultra processed food is a food that contains so-called cosmetic additives that we normally don't use, such as emulsifiers, thickeners, any numbered ingredients, seed and vegetable oils, hydrogenated vegetable oils, all those things that are harmful to us. And so it was in 2014, I went to do the Kokoda Trail in Papua New Guinea, which is like this um, walk that everyone does. It's uh, where Australians fought Japanese and it's a 96 kilometers track and we all do it as a memorial walk or not all, but a lot of Australians do it. And you're in a jungle for a week and you have to bring your own food. There's no other food you can get. So I was thinking, what do I bring? Everyone was bringing all the protein bars with like all these bad ingredients in them. I didn't know what to bring. So I brought a lot of air dried meat, which is called biltong, and then some nuts and some dried berries. And mm. I ended up mixing it together and it tasted delicious. So when I came back, like I won't tell you the whole story, but long story short, I spoke to my now business partners and we decided to hire a food scientist to develop a bar for us that's made from dried meat and nuts and fruit. Fantastic. And that was our product. So from then on, we, we, we always do a lot of research. We're trying to make a functional 
food that's not ultra processed food like it is processed because even cooking is processing but it's not ultra processed which means it doesn't have any artificial additives or harmful additives it's just the real food put into bar so we start started with the meat bars and then we started reading into research about collagen. So then we made collagen bars and then we made collagen powders and started making uh, other products because we realized that in Australia, uh, when we use the animal, and I have to also point out that we only use organic grass-fed, grass-finished animals that are regeneratively farmed, which means they help to improve the environment instead of damaging it. And so we realized that a lot of the parts of the animals get thrown away in the landfill because no one wants to buy it. So because we are not only about the human health, but also the health of the planet, we started using the whole animal from nose to tail. So now we use the meat for the meat bars and biltong. We use the hides for the collagen, and then we use the internal organs for freeze-dried capsules because the internal organs are packed with vitamins and minerals. They're like a nature's multivitamin and people don't wanna eat it. So we freeze dry it and desiccate it into capsules and give it to people that way. So it's kind of like Dr. Chaffee probably told you when, um, or Chaffee, I should say, when Inuits lived the way they live, they never had any vegetables and fruits, yet they covered all their vitamin and mineral needs from eating organ meats, meats and fats. So we help people to do that via taking our whole foods capsules. Wow. Yeah, so pretty much in a nutshell, Chief is all about whole foods, snacks and supplements that don't contain any industrially manufactured ingredients. Fabulous. And so with, so for example, if you're having, um, if you're fueling for one of the, I, I cycle quite a lot. And, uh, and so would your, so in terms of how fueling for things like a long distance event, be it cycling or running, how do the, how does the uh, things like the bars, they, is that, is it a long burn or long sustainable product that you would 100%. eat? From? So the collagen bars are keto friendly. They're high in fat. They're made from nuts, a little bit of MCT oil and collagen and sweetened with monk fruit. So, and they have also vitamin C for the collagen synthesis. So they're great because every single of our bars has 11 grams of collagen, which is quite a lot. Um, any other bars in the Australian market have about one and a half to five grams. We put 11 grams because all the research in collagen shows that if you supplement with 10 to 15 grams of collagen 30 to 60 minutes before training or during training, um, then it gets to your ligaments and tendons and you not only prevent injuries, but you get your ligaments and tendons stronger. So you need to have it 30 to 60 minutes before training because you need to be warmed up and it needs to be digested for it to get into the tendons. But mm -hmm. I think, and there's no research on it, I think on a long ride, you can have them in between, in the middle of the training, and it will still get to your ligaments and tendons because you're still cycling for another hour or two. Wow, right, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's the collagen is the benefit for ligaments and tendons, and then you've got the fats to give you the fuel. So it depends what kind of athlete you are. If you are used to fueling on gels and carbohydrates, Bye. This might not cut the deal because it, there's no there's not really much carbohydrates. It's like five grams, two to five grams per bar. Yeah. So, but if you're a fat fueled athlete, then amazing. Like they don't give you feeling of fullness or sore stomach. They're really easy digestible, and you don't have to chew them. They kind of melt. They're like a peanut butter bar. Yeah, so okay. it's very easy to well, eat on a run or ride. Yes, well, funnily enough, I made some what we we I referred to as Zucker bombs the other week, and that was actually taking uh, peanut butter, crunchy peanut butter, uh, some uh, coconut oil, and yeah. 
some cocoa powder and then mixing it with a bit of azuka and actually making it into sort of a bonbon and actually went cycling and fueled from that because yeah. a lot of professional cyclists use coconut oil um, for their fueling. And because, yeah, no, I stay away from gels. The main yeah. reason, funnily enough, the main reason I stay away from gels is on a bicycle, if you're cycling and you've got a computer on the bike and you've used a, a glucose gel or something, what happens is you get a blood sugar spike and then a crash and then your eyes are affected and you can't even read the computer. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, you, you literally, the sugar crash stops you being able to see, so your eyes go blurred. And so it's quite dangerous, actually, to fuel. That's crazy. Well, I didn't realize that. Yeah, it can be quite wow. yes, and so when you yeah, and so when you can't read your computer, you know that you've got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> so that was just my personal experience. So that's why I was very interested, from a personal perspective, to hear about how you know what what yeah. in terms of how many bars you take, and it's very interesting to hear that you use the uh, or have a half an hour to an hour before to allow yeah. them to get into your tendons. That sounds really good. And actually, as you get older, um, you are more susceptible to injury. injury. And I- 100%. I started having all these injuries around the age of 33, 34. And then I also was diagnosed with osteopenia. And there's lots of research as well indicating that collagen helps to increase bone density, even in menopausal women. And so I started taking lots of collagen. My tendon issues completely went away. I have been testing my bones on a proper medical scan every year and my osteopenia is gone. My bone density has been increasing every year and I'm 44 now and my bones are perfectly fine. And when I was at university studying exercise physiology, they were telling us that if you get osteopenia after the age of 30, you can't you can bring your bones back to normal density. You can stop for the osteopenia from progressing further to osteoporosis, but you can't increase your bone density. And now we know that with the supplementation of collagen and strength training and also addressing other aspects of your diet, you can reverse osteopenia at any age. Wow. Well, that's amazing. And that is such, yeah. so, that's so valuable as well for anybody listening and thinking to themselves that, that they didn't know that. And, uh, oh, well, that's amazing. Oh, well, well done for doing that. That's just, a, that's incredible. And pre you, presumably then there's got to be some load bearing exercise to go with of that course, to yeah. create the density. What about yeah. things, like supplements and things, you know, do you, does, uh, what, what about things like calcium and things? Is that required for increasing the density? There are some good bone supplements, but I actually don't think it's required. A lot of the research is done on calcium and collagen, but there is also some just on collagen. And I think it works really well because bones are 50% collagen and 50% calcium. And you can cover your calcium in your diet. You don't have to take supplement, but it's very hard to cover extra collagen in your diet because you would have to eat all the animal cartilages and skins and drink a lot of bone broth. And I think it would be extremely difficult. So having a collagen supplement, it's easy way out of it. And it's also much easier to digest collagen powder than eating cartilages, right? So, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. And also our collagen declines by 1%, by, by 1% to 2% every year from the age of 20 and then we utilize and turn over more collagen from the age of 40. That's why a lot of people start having more wrinkles and aches and pains in their joints and things like that after 40. So supplementing with collagen seems to be the way to go to, you know. Yeah. And, and presumably, yeah. well, the other thing I found as well is that um, it's very important when you're exercising not to go too mad with it too soon. Just ease yourself into it because, again, yeah. I found yeah, if you if you suddenly um, if you're a bit like me, which is somebody that's a bit um, you know, I'll, I'll suddenly get into a phase of going go to the gym and then overlift and yeah. then try recovering from injury. And it's that do you, do you have do you have you know if your clients? Do you have people that you, you're sort of helping not do that type of thing? Of course, you... I don't let them do it. Everything is about progressive overload. You know, I have some people that at the beginning. They really have to do just a mat work Pilates and just do their core and glute strengthening, their jo jo shoulder joint strengthening before they even start doing any squats and deadlifts. It can even take weeks to months 
because some people when they are very heavy they've never exercised in their life they have lots of postural issues you can't just give them a bar and tell them go squatting it's impossible <laughs> first people will take months to build up to it but that's a safe way of doing it, an effective way of doing it. I can get anyone uh, on a squat bar and tell them, oh, squat this and that, and then in three weeks' time, they'll be so broken, they will not be able to do anything for the next three to six months. But that's not the point. Yes. No, yeah. And I, I know, and I think that, you know, it's very important as well, the things like form as well, uh, having the correct 100%. form. Because that's the sort of thing that I know from, again, my own personal experience, thinking, how am I actually supposed to be lifting this bar in the with the correct yeah. form? I mean, that's if you don't know, if you don't have that knowledge, and that's why having uh, you know somebody like yourself helping people with the, mm. you know getting acquiring that knowledge to do it properly, so that yeah. you can avoid uh, that sort of thing. And and as, as far as things like a program is concerned, what do you generally do for with with your clients? Is it something that you do weekly, or do you do uh, how how regularly do you do you do that with people? It depends who the person is and what is their history of exercise, their body awareness, their technique. I have some clients that come to me once a week. I give them things to do by themselves at home. I film it for them and then they go by themselves. If they're unsure, they send me video back or something. But then I have some clients, they come to me three to four times a week because they can't really do it by themselves. There's like especially older people because it takes very long for them to create a new neural connection between the brain and the muscle i might teach them something one day they it takes them the whole session to learn the move yes. and then they come two days two days later and they again can't do it properly <laughs> and it takes weeks yeah. and weeks and weeks. so they need they need ongoing help they need me to like really watch them and keep correcting them all the time while someone who is an athlete and they have great body awareness. They might come just once a week, reassess, do exercises, progress, and it's it's easy sailing, smooth sailing. So it depends. It's very it's very individual with everything, with exercise, with diet. If someone spits out a program out of their laptop and it's like a best diet for everyone and best training for everyone, and it's just one thing that is meant to fit to everyone, they are either have no idea or they're just blatantly lying because there's okay. not one approach fits all with anything. Exercise, training, nutrition, mindset, everyone is different and it really depends on everyone's history right. and current health status, mindset, lots of different things. But yes, and talking about mindset, you mentioned NLP as well earlier. And yeah. how does that fit within the the sort of the ecosystem of what you're putting, putting together for, for your clients? How does that work? Look, yeah. most of my clients are intelligent people. They're not stupid. And they once I explain to them once what they should be eating, they know what should, they should be eating, but that they don't do it because they had stressful day, because they were sad, this and that. So... They need to change their mindset in mm -hmm. how they see nutrition, how they manage their stress during the day, their anxiety, how they're socialized. So it's kind of like a whole lifestyle and mindset overhaul as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So that's great because you're tackling every area then. And then, yeah. uh, so that, and um, brilliant. And, and how long does it take generally, do you see with, for people to make that change? What is the sort of transitionary period? Is that? Is it it's eight, very individual. Eight. Again, if they, they tell you it takes 21 days to create new habits, I don't believe in it. Some people are just like that. They switch. They're like, okay, I'll do this. I'm committed. And mm -hmm. some people just keep failing and failing and failing until, oh, you know, God. they learn. <laughs> it's so it's, it's very individual. Yes. It also depends on, on everyone's life at the moment. Like if you think it for yourself, if you're in a chilled state, you don't have any stress in your life, you're more yeah. open to adapting new habits because you have the mental capacity. If you yeah. have five kids running around the house, your business is falling apart, you have financial issues and you're stressed, it is very difficult to uh, take new habits on board, especially if they're uncomfortable and they're like making you give up on some things that you like that might be your crutch to deal with your stress. Right, got it. So, if pe yeah. people are listening to the podcast and things, and they wanted to make a start, I mean, what would what would you suggest is a good way of going about it? it should they just look at everything in you know in terms of change lifestyle changes? 
um what would you recommend to people listening i think just like it depends what they want to change like if if they're just after being healthier i think there's a lot of good information out there but then it's hard to see what is the good information and what is not i'll just personally find someone good that can help me i even myself when I have some kind of issues with mindset, I have a very good hypnotherapist and I always revert to him and I even send some of my clients to him. So I always try to find the best people in every industry to help me. And, you know, I'll just, I'll just tell people to not be scared. Like they don't have to commit to seeing someone every week for the rest of their lives. It's kind of like paying for a course to learn how to be healthier, how to lead your lifestyle. Right. So... Yes. Yeah. Great. And, and as from your side of things, then Ed, you what are you? Uh, do you have things that you're supporting people with that are sort of online based things? Uh, is is your business uh, predominantly around the sort of nutrition side, or do you have other things and courses that you do? So. I do lots of one-on-one with my clients when I take them to a training studio where we do the training, talk about nutrition, mindset and everything. But also I have online clients that I see face-to-face -to, -face to talk about nutrition and their training as well. I take videos of exercises, send it to them. I do online training session one-on-one if they need their technique to be fixed. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different options. Oh, I don't like I don't like sending people just like a nutrition plans. I like to talk and just help people to be the best they can be within what they have. Like, I don't like to tell people, okay, now at three o'clock in the afternoon, you have to eat tuna and for dinner, you have to eat chicken soup because if they don't feel like it, it's going to be struggle and they never stick to it. So we talk, find out what people like, how it fits in their lifestyle, and then we create options. So for dinner, you can have this, 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 or this, you know what I mean? Instead of giving people strict guidelines. So even if it's online, it still always involves interacting with me and talking about how they feel, what they want, and things like that. Well, that's really good because, yes, I mean, the thing is, as, and we've identified that, is that anything, that any changes have to be easy, don't they? Because, as you say, people don't stick to the things if it's hard. And it's the yeah. same, that, you know, it's we're very anti the whole sort of the diet industry as well, because we believe that, you know, it has a negative connotation. And it's painful for people to think about dieting. Uh, and we're very much about sort of helping and supporting people and creating a community. And that's a that's a bit about what we're trying to do is create a movement and have people yeah. support them through that process of becoming, making those lifestyle changes and doing it, all of the things that you're, you know, that, that, that you're advocating for clients and doing for them and supporting them. And I think that's really key. But um, yeah, uh, and um, yes, it's been really great to hear everything that uh, you know, everything that you've you've talked about today. Do you have any for our viewers? Do you have any uh, sort of parting sort of thoughts or uh, or views that you'd like to share? Well, the main thing that we mentioned at the beginning: become a pack flipper. Don't believe the front of the packaging. Read the back of the packaging, yeah. and educate yourself. Read and find a good quality professionals to help you along your journey at least at the beginning right well thank yeah brilliant well thank you so much for that and thank you for your time and coming on today it's been brilliant thank you for having me it's it's lovely to hear you know your views and 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 you know having having bringing that uh, to us is is really really great thank you so much thank you